Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today I want to make this simple airplane landing animation and we'll be using existing model from another tutorial. If you want to see how to make this airplane, you can go ahead and watch the tutorial. I will put a link in the description. And also in the description, you will find a link to download this airplane so you can start animating right away. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please leave a like. It will really help my channel to grow. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see content like this in the future, please hit that subscribe and additionally bell button if you want to get notified when I release something new. And if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender and you want to become a 3D illustrator, go and check out my courses that are carefully designed to teach you beginner and intermediate skills in quickest and most effective way. For example, with the new Ultimate 3D bundle, you can go from simple cubic designs all the way to full character illustration in a matter of weeks. So if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. So after opening the airplane file, you should see something like this. And first of all, let's make some environment that will help to make our animation. So let's press Shift A and we'll add a plane that will serve as our background. So tab in and let's scale it up. Let's make it really large like this. Then tab out and let's press Shift A and let's add another plane. Now tab in, let's scale it up a tiny bit. That will be our landing strip and press S then Y to scale it on Y axis, something like that. And now I'll press Ctrl R and create some cuts here. Right click to release, let's look from the top. And now let's enable proportional editing, select some of these vertices and just move them around and you can increase the fall off with the mouse wheel so that we have some little variation on that landing strip. Okay, once this is done, let's press A to select all and E to extrude this tiny bit. Now let's press 3 for face select, select this face right here and hold Shift S and switch cursor to select it. Tab out and let's press Shift A and let's add yet another plane. Let's tab in and scale it down and scale on Y. So S then Y and scale it up. Now tab out and let's go to the modifiers tab and let's add array modifier and I will Put 0 on the X and minus 2 on Y and increase the count. Let's press G then Y to move it back here. Maybe we can scale this down a tiny bit and add few more strips like that. Okay, and once this is done, let's tab in and press E and extrude it just slightly so it sits above the landing strip. Okay, so this will be our scene. Maybe we can make this a little bit larger. And now let's set up our airplane for animation. So first of all, I will just hold Shift S, switch cursor to world origin. And let's press Shift A and let's add an empty. And this will serve as our container for the airplane and you will see why. And now let's just select the airplane here. Control click the empty and press Control P and object. This will set the parent. So now if we move the empty, we are moving the airplane as well. Now let's look from the side by pressing 3 on an ampad, press G then Z and move it up so it sits here. And now let's set up some keyframes for the animation. So I want the airplane to start somewhere here for example. So let's move it there by pressing G. And we're at the frame 1 so let's press I to insert the location keyframe. And then we can move to frame 30, hit G to move the airplane down and it will touch down somewhere here for example let's zoom in a little bit it can sit slightly above the airstrip like that press i and insert location now move to frame 60 we'll press g then y move it somewhere here press i and insert location keyframe and now let's move to frame 90 press g and move it somewhere here Press I and insert location. Uh, maybe this will be too fast. So what you can do if you want to stretch this, you can move to frame one and press S and scale it down all the way on the frame 120. Um, and now let's just go to the output properties and switch frame rate to 30. And now we can preview this animation. Okay, so we have something like airplane landing and then taking off again. Um, let's set the end animation frame to something like 120 so that it loops um, but the movement is a little bit quirky and it's caused by non-linear curves here so let's switch to the animation tab and let's switch this one window to graph editor so we can better see our curves and right now we can edit this so 
first of all, uh, we only need the movement on the Y and Z axis. We are not moving on the X axis whatsoever. So with the empty selected, let's just select the X location track and press X to delete it. And now we can select the Y location and we can see some additional frames here and we basically don't need those. So select this frame right there, press X to delete and here as well. So we now have just two keyframes on the Y axis. So the airplane just fluently flies from one point to another and we'll be just moving it on the Z axis up and down. And here I want to press T and switch this to linear so we don't have any Bezier. Um, it just fluently goes from one place to another. And now we can focus on this animation right here in terms of taking off and landing. So let's now refine um, the Z movement. Let's hit three on an numpad for a side view and let's preview the animation. So we can see the airplane touches down too early. So maybe we can just select this frame here and move it on the X axis a little bit down the road. So it touches all the way here does a little bit touch and go and then goes straight up again. I really like this. Okay, and now we can maybe modify this curve right here so it goes down a little bit quicker. And now I want to introduce some rotation. So this is the time where we select the plane itself and let's go to the frame one and insert rotation keyframe. And now we can scrub through the timeline right before the airplane touches down, press R and rotate it a little bit like that. So it can land on all three points and let's press I and insert the rotation keyframe. And here it goes up again and we'll need to straighten it out um, so we can loop this. So let's just select these keyframes here, press Shift D and duplicate them. And now select these two and duplicate them towards the end. So we have something like this. Um, this is not too realistic, of course, but this is solely for the purpose of this to work um, within the loop. So don't worry about that right now. Um, right now we have some rotation, uh, but I'd like to introduce one more rotation and that's along its longitudinal axis on the Y axis of the plane. But I don't want to do manual animation here. Let's press N here, hovering over the graph editor and let's introduce some modifiers and let's insert some noise. Of course, uh, we'll need some lower scale here and some lower strength. And let's restrict the frame range from frame one to frame 120. And let's give this some time to blend in and blend out. So we now have some slight movement along the Y axis of the plane. Maybe it's a little bit windy or something like that. And we can now play with the strength here so it doesn't bank that much. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, so that's the basic movement. We can now, for example, delete the Z rotation here. Um, the whole channel, we don't need it. So we can focus ourselves on these two animations. And on the empty, we have these two as well. So that's for the airplane movement. Uh, one more thing, we can make the propeller move. It's parented to the airplane. So we'll need to rotate it along Y axis. So just make sure you have this switch to XYZ Euler. And now let's scrub to the frame one, press I and insert the rotation keyframe. Of course, we can now delete the X rotation and Z rotation. And on the Y, we can introduce another modifier and that will be generator. And additionally, to make this work, we need to parent these blades to the propeller as well. So let's select those by holding shift, shift click the propeller center, press control P and object and keep transform. And now this should rotate. 
so we now have some propeller rotation and we can set the speed later um, you can change the speed here um, the default is one I think and you can slow this down if you want it to be more visible and pronounced um, so you can play with that later and the next thing I want to do is to introduce camera movement and some particle simulation uh, for the camera, before when I did the animation, most of the time I moved the background around and the object was static. Here I want to do something different. Um, this time the camera is moving with the airplane, the airplane is moving and the surroundings are fixed in the world. So let's go to the frame one. And now let's press N for a side panel and I'll use ISOCAM and true ISOCAM. You can find the link in the description, you can download the add-on and use it. And right now, let's change the resolution in the output tab to something like 1600 to 1200. And I want to parent this camera to the airplane. So let's select the empty here and press Alt G. That will reset it to 000 location. But the keyframes are still in place. So if you move the timeline, uh, the airplane will jump back where it was. So this will now only help us to parent the camera. So let's select the camera, control click the empty press Ctrl P and object and keep transformation. So now if you scrub through the camera, you have it fixed on your airplane and you can change the camera settings as well. So let's switch it to something like 16 on the orthographic scale. So we have a better view of our scene. And now we can see that movements of the airplane a little bit better and we can see how it loops. Let's now set up some particle systems. So I'll find some position like for example here. Um, this is purely to again uh, position some new object and parent it to the empty. So let's press shift A and let's add a plane. Now let's scale it down a tiny bit and I will toggle the x-ray here. Let's make it smaller like that and move it under the wheel here and we can go ahead and activate the mirror modifier there so it mirrors on the other side as well. Okay, something like this and now press G then Z and move it up so it touches the wheels. Something like that. It doesn't have to be precise. Now let's hover over the mirror modifier. Let's press Ctrl A to apply it. And now Ctrl click the empty again and let's press Ctrl P and parent the object. So now these move with our airplane and these will serve purely as the particle objects emitter so let's select the object once again let's go to the particle settings and create a new particle system and we'll need to set up some range so let's look from the side by pressing 3 on an ampad and let's see where the airplane touches down we can see it kind of touches down here on the frame 59 if it's too late you can select the empty and move these things around so we can just press G and move this a little bit sooner so now the touchdown will be on the frame 53 um, so let's select the emitter again and let's set the frame start to 53 for the particles and now let's scrub through the animation and see where it goes up again somewhere here so for example 82 and let's set the number of particles to something like 500 and now we can preview what we have here in the scene. Let's disable the X-ray view. And you can see the camera here parented to the empty, moving with our airplane. And you can see these particles start to emit when the airplane touches down and then goes up again. But there's a slight issue. You can see these particles falling down through, um, through our background. So let's select the background and let's go to the physics tab and enable collision. And same for the airstrip. So now, if it touches down the particles should stay on our terrain and they're just bouncing around here and we want something different for them i want them to disperse um, as it touches down these particles are basically dust particles so let's select our particle emitter once again and you can rename it here of course so you can better see uh, what you're targeting and let's go to the particle settings and in the velocity tab will set some velocity for these particles along the y-axis. So this will be their initial movement speed. So let's set something like five along the y-axis. And once this touches down, you can see these particles traveling down behind the airplane. And now we'll introduce some random velocity as well. So let's set five 
for randomize. And this is more like it. I want something like this. Maybe not so much. Uh, this is too strong. And I don't like them bouncing around. So I want them to stick um, to the background. So let's select the road here. Go to the physics tab again. And we can increase the stickiness um, of this collider. And for the background as well. So let's set stickiness all the way to 10. And now if you preview this. These are still moving. But they are bound. Um, to the background they are staying on the background so now let's introduce some object that will be rendered as those particles so let's press shift a and i'd like to use icosphere for this and modify it to one subdivision let's press g then z move it down so it doesn't get in the way and now if we select the inventory again and go to the particle settings we can scroll down to the render tab then switch halo to object and choose icosphere from the list and of course we'll need to increase the scale a little bit so let's set something like 0.8 and scale randomness all the way to almost one and let's see what it does these are too large a little bit so we can change the scale and increase the randomness a little bit more and of course we can reduce the count to something like 300 and preview our animation okay looks quite fine um, maybe this random velocity is too much or maybe the y velocity is too much so let's try uh, to play with those settings a little bit so we have some better results but i think i like this so far so this is how you can easily do some particle animation that sticked on the ground when the airplane touches and right now it doesn't look so good but when you use materials um, it will kind of blend with the background and it will look much better. So let's do that right now. Uh, let's select the background and I will switch to the material preview. You can see some materials already on the plane. It's from the original file and you can play with these. There are basically two basic materials on the airplane, blue and white. Of course, you can select whichever you like and just change the color around. So that's all basically up to you how you want this to look in the end. And now let's create a new material for the background and let's create some kind of grassy terrain here maybe reduce the lightness a little bit here and let's select the strip and let's give it some dark color and maybe some yellow or orange color for the strip there and now let's select the icosphere here um, from the list and let's create a new material and for example let's set this to something dark like the airstrip but with the full roughness and let's increase the roughness for the grass as well so now if we preview this we have some nice dust particles around and we can now change some render settings so let's go to the render tab enable bloom and screen space reflections for the ev preview enable scene lights and scene world and you will see this is a little bit too dark so let's press shift a and let's add a light i will choose sunlight i really like to use sunlight for this kind of scene because it will make this flat shading on the plane really pronounced with the strong shadows i will press g then z move it up slightly i will now hold period on a keyboard switch to the 3d cursor press r x 30 to move this 30 degrees and r z 45 so we have a nice light shining from the side here and let's increase the strength of the light to something like three and additionally i like to add some ambience here so let's go to the world properties and let's set something like a violet tone and increase and you can see how it fills the shadows here and now if you want to render out this animation I like to use cycles for better shadows so we can switch to the cycles choose GPU some denoising for the flat shaded animation like this I like to go something like 256 or even 128 it will make the render really fast and now I'll press ctrl B to limit our render for only the camera and now let's preview this in cycles it's jumpy a little bit, I don't know why, um, but you can see those shadows 
and basically the animation style now to make this loop nicely you need to make sure that on the frame 1 and frame 120 there is no airplane shadow visible so we can select the empty here and just play with the height on the z-axis here so press G then Y and move this keyframe up until the shadow disappears and we can go to frame 1 and do the same thing here okay and now it should behave as expected one more thing um, let's select the emitter go to the particle settings and don't forget to disable show emitter so these planes under the wheels are not visible and now just go to the output tab choose your output folder and switch this for example to ffmpeg with mp4 container and go to the render tab press ctrl f12 to render out your animation so that's it for the simple airplane landing animation i really hope you enjoyed this one if you did please leave that like it will really help me and again if you're new to the channel please hit that subscribe thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day